Greetings, and thank you for being here with us on today as we prepare for our Bible study. It is December. Can you believe it? It is the month of December, and uh, shortly we will be reaching a new year, if God's will. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day, this evening, wherever it may, whatever it may be, wherever others are listening. God, we thank you now because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be at this point in our life. So we thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength as we continue to push forward, um, learning to be more like you. In your name, I do pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Our December emphasis is building and rebuilding hope building and rebuilding hope. And our thought is kingdom citizens know that biblical hope, emphasizing biblical hope, is a sure foundation upon which we base our lives, believing that God always keeps his promises. They know that hope, or we know that hope, provides a confident assurance that God has empowered us to overcome doubt, despair, and hopelessness. Now let's look at some key words, and we have a phrase here as well. And as we look at these words, I want you to uh, relate them to rebuilding hope, if you don't mind. Relate these words and this phrase to rebuilding hope as we go through a little bit of definition. So the first word is victory. And victory means to overcome difficult, overcome a difficult problem. And the Bible says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. All right, so that's victory. And oftentimes, we'll probably say it again later in the lesson, but when we think of victory, um, you know, some people probably think of sports. You know, they won, we won. Um, but let's think of it as hope as well. Reassurance comes um, as well, reinsurance comes in a time of fear and anxiety, and it's when you remember God's promises. You are reassured that he will never leave you or forsake you when you are in a situation. So that even relates to victory. The word confidence means to have faith in God. Uh, I am confident that if God has brought me through before, um, brought me through situations, I'm confident that he will bring me through again. And good news, something that is positive. Now, everybody wants to hear some good news. So good news is something that is positive. It's encouraging, it's uplifting, it's desirable. It's that news that you want to hear. You don't wanna hear negative news, but you wanna hear that good news. All right, and so our topic today is victory in Jesus. And we have a few questions for um, us to ponder, a few questions to consider. And the first question is, when you think of the word victory, what comes to your mind? And as I said previously, people probably think of like winning a game or something, um, or winning an event, or overcoming a defeat. The next question, if someone asked you, are you living a victorious Christian life? How would you respond? And so I thought about that, and I said that I would let them know that my hope is in Jesus, and I have all confidence that he lives in me, and that I strive hard every day to exemplify characteristics of someone who is living a victorious life. And the next question, what are some ways we achieve, a victory, we achieve victory as a church family? So it's kind of that question the second question pointed to you. The next question points to us as a church. And uh, we need to seek God and ask God for help as a church body. We need to turn our challenges over to God. Um, we also need to begin to praise and worship God for answers. And if we do that, then the end of the story will be simply amazing. Our text comes from 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 58, and it reads, 
When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with the immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 58 says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The heart of our lesson is kingdom citizens know that we work from victory. We work from victory. We do not work for victory. All right? We work from victory. We do not work for victory. So what's the difference in us working from victory versus working for victory? When you fight for victory, you risk the chance of losing. But fighting from victory, you cannot lose. When you fight for victory, there is an opportunity of the fear of losing causing you to quit. But when you fight from victory, your confidence will drive you to believe in yourself and you get the drive to finish the enemy off. When you fight for victory, pride creeps in. But when you fight from victory, self-pride is replaced with worship and gratitude. So hopefully that'll stick with you, the difference between uh, fighting from victory or working from victory and not working for victory. Just a little backdrop here. The victorious Christian life is the life that is lived by faith in a moment-by-moment -moment surrender to God. The victorious Christian life is rooted and grounded in faith. The book of Hebrews 11 tells the stories of men and women who, by faith, were victorious in some way. They had the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews 11 shows us that the things we see in this world correspond to better things in the heavenly realm. Hebrews has the phrase, by faith etched in the scripture, which described the actions and attitudes of Israel's ancestors. Abraham had a faith experience when he left his home. His journey to Canaan exemplified faith on earth and showed his desire for a better country, which was a heavenly home. Remember Moses? He had a faith experience dealing with Pharaoh. Listen. Our God is always victorious, no matter the foe. Even the cross of Christ was not a defeat for the Lord, but a victory. Now the prince of this world would be driven out, Jesus said in the final week of his earthly ministry. At his trial before the high priest, Jesus testified. He said, you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven. That's the victory believers share in. The victorious Christian life is a life lived in triumph over everything in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is the conquer, the conquering of fear, knowing God's peace. The victorious Christian life naturally leads to a defeat of death itself and a glorious reward in heaven. If we go to our first point, uh, it comes from verses 54 and 55. And it is kingdom citizens know that the future is bright. Death no longer has power over them. We often hear this next statement at funerals. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? 
Where, O oh death, is your sting? In this life, one of the things that most people fear, including Christians, is death. Though we know we will not be here forever, death is that dreaded event that no one looks forward to, while others fight hard to keep it as far away as possible. From the death of uh, Abel, Cain's brother, who was beat to death with the jawbone of a donkey until this day of November 19, 2022, we still fear death. People continue to, to fear death. However, for the Christian, we must embrace the truth that death no longer has a hold on us. Death cannot hurt us because Jesus is victorious over death. Then we are victorious over death as well. It is only a portal through which the believer travels from this life to the next life. Some people are fascinated by the thought of moving from the perishable to the imperishable and from the mortal to immortality. The truth is, we can only imagine, but imagine we should. How do you imagine heaven? I think this process of understanding death comes with maturity. I have probably thought more of how I would lay in a casket to never walk on earth again, as opposed to embracing the fact that I should be thinking of living to live again when I go to heaven. What about you? Do you think about death as it relates to heaven? Our next point, kingdom citizens have so much to thank God for. The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord could have allowed us to die in our sins. He could have given us our just deserves. But instead, he took our hell in order that we could go to his heaven. Think, just think about it. He took the abuse, the beatings, with leather switches across his back. He let people spit in his face. He struggled with the wood cross on his back and more just for us to avoid the sins of the world. So we should thank him. We should thank him daily. He daily forgives us of our sins. So again, we should thank him. Listen to these verses. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles, Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluding, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For this, we should give him thanks. God gives us victory. And there's a song I've been listening to lately and it stays on my heart off and on. And it's by C.C. Wine and she sings um, this song and um, the first verse says, I love you, Lord. Speaking of giving God thanks, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And then she says the chorus, because all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I encourage you to find that song. Our last point. Kingdom citizens know that because of the victory we have in Christ, we can remain steadfast. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully 
to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. When we understand what we possess in Christ Jesus, we will remain unmovable, firm, always abounding. One of the keys to the victorious Christian life is grasping the fact that we don't manufacture our victory, but our victory comes from God. Are you giving yourself fully to the work of the Lord? Do you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord? When we are assured of who we are in Christ, we don't have a problem remaining firm and steadfast. You know, we don't have to waver back and forth. How would you help a person who is struggling with this verse? Let nothing move you. Give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Victory is important to each of us. We desire to win. We desire to be conquerors, but our victory does not come from our efforts. It comes from the finished work of Christ. The best we can do is appropriate what Christ has done on our behalf. We must confess that we are winners and not losers. We are victors and not victims. So again, today, I encourage you. I highly encourage you to build and rebuild your hope in the Lord. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of sharing your word. We thank you for bringing information to light. God, we thank you for reminding us of your goodness. And we thank you for allowing uh, your words to penetrate into us so that we would be those faith walkers and that we would be a light to others that do not have hope. God, we thank you now. In your name, we do pray that we will meet back to this place of learning of you real soon. Amen. Thank you.